this is what happens when a supposedly good trip just goes to the shit house. And I'm like, come on through, cook. Yeah. I want to put my soap on. That's basically. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Married to Medicine, Season 5, Episode 13. And as I said, their good vacation just has literally gone to the porter party. Honey. It's ridiculous. Um, where we left off is where we pick up. Quad against everybody. It, it's this whole thing of Mariah has brought it up that Quad, it gets special treatment. And people don't come down on her as hard as they come down on other people because they think that she is soft and she's the youngest one and she, you know, on and on and on and on and on. And Quad's saying, no, 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 that's not what goes on. Well, Simone has actually taken it up and then they're actually going around the boat and they're saying, no, well, we do take it easy on you, Quad, and this, that thing, and the other. And she's like, really? Really? Okay, well, whatever. And then they went into the realm of saying that she thinks that she's better than them. Now, she did nip that in the bud. She's like, I don't think that I'm better than you all. I am just a girl from Memphis, Tennessee, and that's period. And, and you know what? That got right up underneath my skin. It really did because, are y'all kidding? Are y'all kidding? Y'all are the same people who, when this girl first came to the show, she wasn't shit, remember? Mariah made her out to be Mariah and Toya, because they both knew her, to be the underdog. She was the girl that didn't have shit that married the doctor because, uh, you know, Mariah was her good friend and she helped her to establish herself and taught her how to be a wife and all of these things. So now all of a sudden she thinks she's better than you all. Whatever. Whatever. Um... Whatever. I could actually honestly say, and I know we get into this banter back and forth about, oh, you just like Quad and you just take her side over everybody. Whatever. If I was in Quad's shoes, none of this stuff would be going on. You know why? Because I wouldn't speak to none of these people. I honestly wouldn't. When I watched the first season back, there would be, I don't think there'd be one of these ladies that I would actually be friends with at all. At this point, because again, I'm always the one that says, I don't really care what you think about me. What you think about me is not my business. It's not my business until you bring it to me. When you bring it to me and you put it out there for me to see it, then you'll be dealt with accordingly. And that's exactly what would have happened. And there wouldn't be not one married to medicine person that I would actually be speaking to. And the way things are going lately, I wouldn't even be speaking to Gregory. Okay? I wouldn't be speaking to his ass either. But that's just me. But she watched it back. She watched the season back like we watched it back. And nobody was genuine. Not a soul. Not a soul. Well, yeah, Mariah wasn't genuine either. They still were cool up until season two when her colors actually really did show after the viewing of the first. And then while they were filming the second, her colors showed and they've been at it ever since. But everybody seems to have forgotten what they wanted to forget. And there's no problem with people who don't like Quad. Quad is not for everybody. There's things about Quad that people don't like that I understand. Yes, I understand some people don't like her high-pitched voice. Some people think she's fake um, and all these different things. I understand that, and that's fine. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But all of this attack <laughs> and thinking that I want to go back and forth with you because I do like her, I do like her, and so what? So what? She's not for everybody. Same as with me. I'm not for everybody. Everybody that clicks on my channel does not like me. And if you read the comments, you can see that. There's people that get in them comments and they try to get real cute because they just don't like me for whatever reasons that they don't like me. Nobody cares. 
Don't nobody care. And it's the same thing with her. I'm sure she don't care. She really don't. And it's just the thing. It is what it is. It's a show. We're watching the show. I have to report on the show the way I report on the show. I don't know why it's so much hoopla over this show as opposed to the other ones that I do. Because there's people in the other ones that I just rip apart as well. And there's some that I actually take to. I don't know. I don't get it. But um, Miss Squad is a hot topic. But it is what it is. Keep watching. Um, I ain't never going to just break out and then don't like her because people don't want me to. I like her. I like her. I like Jackie. I like Simone. There's a bunch of people that don't like Simone. They think Simone is a loud mouth crazy bitch. And she is. And she is. But I like Simone. And there's people that don't like Simone at all. I never get jumped on about Simone though. And y'all know I don't generally tear up Simone. I usually let Simone and Cecil live. I think Simone, I give Simone a pass a lot of times because I'm so because I like Cecil so much. I be I sit around and I let Simone go a lot of times, and I've given Gregory a pass a lot of times because of how much I like Quad. Now I don't give Cl um old Curtis's ass a pass because I just don't like Molly Molly. I don't like him, so I don't you know. Mm -mm. But I like Contessa, and I'm finding the same thing. I like Contessa. There's a strong thing with Contessa. Some people like Contessa. Some people don't like Contessa. At first, I didn't really know how to take her, and I was sad on her, but I like Contessa and her husband. I do. I like them. They think a lot of the same ways that I think on some things, so I do like Contessa, and I see there's probably going to start being a banter back and forth about me liking Contessa. And we'll just go. We'll just go there, just like we've gone for the last five seasons of our quad. We will go there. It's no big deal. Now I don't like Miss Renee. Miss Renee can stay her bald headed ass wherever she is. I don't like her. I don't like Shoot Lucy. I don't like Frozen Lake. I don't have none of them people to do. Period. Um, I don't like Toya, and um, I don't. I ain't crazy about Grandma either. Y'all know I didn't like Heavenly. Um, there's days I like Heavenly and there's days that I don't like Heavenly. You know, um, Darren, I don't not like Darren, but Darren don't make good TV. Darren's irritating because he's just there. You know, he just, he he's just there. So, I don't know. Okay, now I went through the whole cast. But anyway, let's move on. Okay, so, you know, they always do like a couples therapy situation. And they this one was no different. But only thing different is that we have Heavenly doing it. I said myself, this is going to be a holy fucking disaster because Heavenly's a holy disaster. And I will say this right away. Contessa, I can see right away, Contessa and her husband get Jackie. They get it. They get Jackie. They get the way she functions and the way she moves. They understand Jackie. Um, I've never been into the position of, oh, Jackie is at fault. Jackie is not at fault, not one little bit, for Curtis cheating on her. No, she's not. If you don't want to be in a relationship anymore, get your ugly ass up and duck your big head down and get out of here and go on. That cheating thing, none of that is Jackie's fault. There is never a, you don't have a fault in your mate cheating on you. And I'm really surprised at how many people keep with this. It's partially, it's her fault. It's her fault. It's not her fault. The only way it could be her fault is if she was doing threesomes. Now, when, when you do threesomes, and you bring another whore into your bedroom and that whore steals your man, bitch, that's your fault. That right there, that's your fault because you brought that whore in there to take your man off of you. That's your fault. But when I'm sitting at work and you go fuck a bitch, I don't have nothing to do with that. Period. I don't have anything to do with it. Yes, I understand all the, oh, he asked her for more time. All of that's nice. You asking me for more time and I didn't give it to you. If it was a situation where he just got up and he left her, then we would say, okay, Jackie, I can't with you, baby. He asked you for more time. You didn't give it and he got up and he left you. But he didn't get up and leave her, did he? He stayed and he slipped and he slid and he snuck out and he fucked that bitch and he tried to use that other bullshit as an excuse and a lot of you fell for it. You all need to get a seat in the fuck section. 
Nothing Jackie did or said made Curtis go fuck somebody. Curtis went fuck somebody because that's what Curtis wanted to do and thought he had a good excuse to do it. And that's what happened. He went and he fucked her and he didn't really like it all that much because one, he never brought it to the forefront. He got caught. And he came back and he's been trying to get his way back ever since. So was it the right decision? No, it wasn't the right decision. And no, at the end of the day, he didn't feel as though it was worth it. Because if he thought it was worth it, he would have just kept on pushing. He ain't kept pushing yet. Anyway, so we started to this couples therapy situation and they start right off with Toya and Eugene. Right away, Toya and Eugene were not here for the bullshit. And I understood it. I understood it. I was like, Heavenly, girl, what are you doing? What are you doing? It was a shit show. These questions, well, these are questions I'm going to ask them. And um, they're questions that everybody wants to know. Mm -hmm. Everybody like who? All of us and the people on Twitter. What kind of a friend are you? I'm going to be Miss. I'm going to uh, be the, the marriage counselor. What kind of friend are you to bring shit like this to the forefront and then spew it? Because that's what you did. You spewed venom at each of those couples. And it was nothing but the shit that be being said, the mean shit that be being said on Twitter. It was like somebody standing in front of you reading mean tweets. That's what it was. Basically standing up there asking Toya, why does she disrespect her husband in public and he tried to def deflect and say I don't my, my wife doesn't disrespect me in public so that was the end of it right he don't feel as though he's being disrespected now whether you feel that or not that's your business but that's what she was pushing I want an answer because that's how she felt if the man said he don't feel disrespected whether you agree with it or not you need to leave it alone but she didn't she kept on pushing until Toya and Eugene both ended up snapping out and I was like Oh, God, this is not going to go well. They got to the snap it out. Then they did uh, Jackie and they did Jackie and Curtis. What, what made you? What did Jackie not do that made you go to her? I'm like, mean tweets, mean tweets. And you got out of Curtis and Jackie, which wanted her crying and him trying to console her and all that. But what you did was embarrass them. You put them on front street and you embarrass them because these people are not friends all like that. They are not friends all like that. There's some people who are friends like that. Simone, Jackie, and Quad are friends. Simone and Heavenly are friends. But all of them as a whole ain't no motherfucking batting Mariah's friend, <laughs> just so you know. Toya and Mariah are trying to be friends because the two bitches ain't got nobody else to be friends with. But they're not friends like that. The ones that are friends like that is when you see Gregory and Quad sitting with her, uh, their other two couple friends that are friends to the show. They're friends like that. That could discuss that type of intimate stuff. I wouldn't have sat there and discussed none of my business in front of these whores. Because you know at some point or another, whatever you're discussing is going to come back at you and be thrown in your face and used against you as ammunition. There is no way I would have sat there and bared my soul to those oars. No way. Those oars nor those cameras. No bravo, Andy, bitch. It's not going to happen. It wouldn't have happened. But they went ahead and they did it. Jackie and Curtis, they did their thing. Okay, cool. No problem. No problem. Then there was this really decent moment where Mariah came over and told Jackie, you know what? You don't have to feel no kind of way about fighting for your marriage. Now, this is one time that I'm going right on the calendar. I'm going to say something nice about Mariah. I know it took a lot for Mariah to actually sit down and really admit that because nobody knew that. Nobody knew that. And I don't know if I could have done that. If I could have put myself on front street like that and opened up about something that intimate that I know that y'all don't know about and the fact that she's always judged about 
everything else because it's all it is. There's a big thing about who likes Mariah, who don't. I'm not the only one. Y'all like to fight and argue with me, but I'm not the only person that doesn't like Mariah. She gets it across the board. There are a lot of people that don't fucking like Mariah. They can't stand her. I am not the only person that does not like Mariah. She gets a lot of that. So I have to definitely take my hat off to her and commend her for actually being transparent enough if she never does it again. But this one time and offering that information that she did not have to offer and telling Jackie, you're not in this by yourself. You're not the only one in this group of women who has had to go through this. And if you want to fight for your marriage, fuck this shit. Fight for your marriage. So I'm going to give Mariah 10 points for that. You did that. Now you did that. And yes, you do deserve to be commended for that. Because I don't know that I would have done that. But that showed a whole lot of character. And Mariah... Girl, I got to throw the gauntlet down for a minute for that. You you did that, mama. You did that. You did that, and you deserve to be commended for it. And I'm saying it. Y'all heard it here. It's being recorded. It is what it is. When she's right, she's right. When she's wrong, she's wrong. But with this, that 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 was a lot. That that was really that was really stand up, Mariah. I'm gonna give you that. Now. After that, we got Cecil and we got Simone. And it started to be, because uh, uh, the whole Toya and Eugene thing, they were really mad at Heavenly and they really were like wanting to go at her. And they're like, let's get up out of this seat before we really have to go there. And Toya was kind of going there like, girl, well, what you get up there, you ain't telling nobody about you, this, that, and the other, because this is the thing. I'm with Toya on that too. I got to throw the gun down for Toya because... Hey, stupid ass Toya, you right, bitch. Because this bitch is standing up in front of y'all constantly talking about her per her marriage is perfect. My marriage is perfect. My marriage is perfect. My marriage is perfect. No, it's not. No, it's not. Your marriage is not perfect. In a lot of ways, your marriage is very one-sided. But whatever. That's what works for y'all. That's what works for y'all. But we see you. We see the forest through the trees. You eat 10 miles of Damon's shit. We see it. You're in a marriage that I wouldn't be in either. Because I wouldn't have a man that I was that. Okay, daddy. Whatever you say, daddy. Because you know nobody else wants you. You feel in your heart that you're lucky to have him. You feel about Damon the way that you think that Quad is supposed to feel about Gregory. But uh, ding, 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 Gregory better get with the motherfucking program because she don't feel that way about you, Gregory. You're not daddy. She don't feel like that about you, boo. You better pull your shit together. Anyway, so it is what it is. So that old one-sided ass shit, uh, Heavenly, you can stop running around with this you so perfect because y'all not perfect. Y'all not one perfect baby. You you kissing his ass. You kiss his ass and suck his dick to get along. And that ain't my idea of a perfect marriage, boo. Boom. Let's move on. Anyway, um, yeah, Mariah. Oh, I, I'm talking about Mariah sharing that. I didn't even finish that she actually shared that Aiden actually cheated on her. That's what the whole big thing was. That Aiden cheated on her. Had a lot of nerve with his little ass. Anyway, um, so Cecil and Simone are watching. Usually they're the ones who facilitate this little part of the trip because they always give the trip. And they do a good job facilitating it. Cecil was pissed off. Before they ever went up there, he was pissed off because he saw what Heavenly was doing and didn't like it. He saw that it was the mean girl syndrome going on and it was like the mean tweets being written, uh, read. And he didn't like it. So when they ended up going up there, it just did not go well. They come out with the whole, did you think that it was okay to take the money and take money out of the account and blah, 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 blah. And Cecil just blew the fuck up. He got mad and he was like, you know what? And I understood it because they already went through this with their real counselor. They went through it. They cleared it up before they left. We watched them. They were in a good space with that. And it was like throwing salt into a wound that was just about healed. And then, you know, you could see that Simone kind of felt some kind of way about it because now she's embarrassed again. You know, and it's being thrown in your face. It Cecil ain't like that shit. And he went off. He went off. 
And then that ended up really making Simone mad because she's like, you lost control. You know, this, that thing, any other. Again, it brought out a lot of the real stuff because we got to see the Cecil that Simone always tells us about. That's not very, very nice. We got to see that Cecil. He was ready to really go there. And I was like, mm. all right, Cecil. Got a little diesel fuel fluid in you, don't you, honey? That's good. And he was like ready to snap out. And she didn't like that too much. And it, that was embarrassing to her. He would embarrassed her in front of her friends, you know. Got it together. They all, that, everybody scattered at that point. They got it all back together. And then they went ahead and they moved on to Qua and Gregory. And that was the complete shit show. The complete shit show. They were like, come on, let's go ahead and do it. I'm looking at Quad again at this point. Quad's been basically on this this vacation. She's been going along to get along and getting drunk. It's basically what she's been doing. Girlfriend been feeling no pain. And she was sitting there and she was so mellow and she was so over it. And they got up there and Gregory started that bullshit. And this time, Quad actually was smart about it. And instead of battling him, she let Gregory show you all his self. And he went down that road about what I bought and what I paid for and all of this shit. And then he was talking to a real motherfucking reckless. And everybody was looking like, whoa, wait a minute, hold up. Uh-huh. What happened to she's so sensitive and everybody goes easy on her. Now y'all got to see a little bit of what she's been dealing with, what she's been saying. She stopped all that motherfucking crying and showed you why she was actually crying. And Gregory made an ass of himself with all that screaming and yelling and talking reckless to his wife like he was talking to some bitch off the street. It showed everything in a whole different light. Every time that this has happened, and it ain't just all about me like a quad. Every time Gregory has opened his mouth and started up with this, what I bought and what I took care of, it just goes through me like a knife through butter. I, I can't. I can't with that. I can't stand anybody to give me anything and then try to hold it over my head. I don't care what the situation. I don't care if we're dating. I don't care if it's my mother. No, I'm very, that's, that's who I am. I don't, mm-mm. Don't give me nothing if I got to kiss your ass and suck your dick all about it for the rest of my life. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. I'd rather you keep it and I do without it. And this is what I get from Gregory. Me, I couldn't do Gregory. Quad is better than me. I'd have been walked off and left him. I couldn't do it. I've been a bust him in the mouth and went on about my business. I couldn't do it. But anyway, he exposed himself. He blew up and he was reckless and nobody appreciated. The guys was like, oh no, dude. Oh, really? And they stopped. And then he brought it back. And I think he he found that he, he figured out that he was too far out there. He was way too far out there. Because what y'all, he's really actually like, I think Gregory's the oldest of the men in the group. I think he's the oldest of the men in the group. Cecil, no, not Cecil. Curtis might be a year or two older than Gregory. But he's too fucking old for that shit. He's too fucking old to have let himself slip up and put, have his ass that far out there. His dirty slip was showing. And it wasn't cute at all. And I was like, mm, mm. But he got it together. He got it together. And this is what, now, I threw the gauntlet down for Mariah earlier. I'm going to pick it back up and take the, the, the fabric and pop the shit out of her in her mouth because... <clears throat> I know y'all had to see her over there co-signing when Gregory was saying about what he paid for and this, that, and the other. And then told when he told Quan that she should be happy about being married to him and she should. And Mariah was over there co-signing. She needs to be happy that he's a doctor and this, that, and the other. So we got the wrong person pegged. For the bitch that's married to their husband only because they're a doctor and the bitch that's there that married their husband for the come up. Mariah, is that you? Y'all try to pin that shit on Toya. But Mariah, is that you? Did you are you with Aiden? Did you decide to stay in your marriage because of the fact that he's a doctor? 
because your thought process seemed a lot like Gregory's. You and Gregory could go to shit because that's some bullshit. That was sloppy and that was fucked up. And I hope y'all see y'all go on and leave it in the comments. What y'all think about Gregory now? Should Quad be so happy because he's a doctor? And that's what he thinks is his worth, actually. Those are issues that Gregory had. They make her issues. Them was is his issues. When he sat there and said, my baby, and she said, at the end of the day, I ain't worried about your title. Your title is just your title. I'm looking for dealing with you. No, being a doctor, that's who, who I am. That's all you think you're good for. Then pff, somebody should actually get with you just because if that's all you're good for, then you saying yourself that you ain't shit. Hello. Anyway, it's rough and it's hard. But it's the truth. It's what it is. It came out of his own mouth. It came out of his own mouth. And maybe he does feel as though she got with him just because he was a doctor. And he's good for it. He's okay for it with her getting with him just when he's a doctor. But he wants her to bend over and kiss his ass and she's not willing to do it. And I don't blame her. Even if I did get with you for the come up, I ain't kissing your motherfucking ass. I'm here now. I'm here now. I already secured the bag, and I ain't kissing your ass, dude. Psh. Anyway, moving on. But he got himself together. He pulled it back together, and he was like, you know, he brought it back around. He Olivia poked it real fast. And then Damon got in and saved the day because everybody had then went off on Heavenly at that point because then Toya was like this ain't right and it's not helping and Heavenly you fucked this all up they were mad as hell at um, Heavenly and that bitch turned around and they said "You, Toya said you get up there and answer questions yourself about your shit I ain't answering a goddamn thing this that thing and the other I said exposed exposed you knew you was doing some fuck shit all the way to the point where you wasn't even willing to play part in it because you knew it was some fuck shit. That's, that Heavenly, I haven't sat on Heavenly ever since she came in. I tried to give her a chance to Heavenly get yeah, messed with her. She messy as fuck. I'm sick of her. I'm sick of seeing Jewel Tanker on here with her being her spiritual guidance. I'm sick of both of their ass. Anyway, um, yeah, that's basically kind of where it kind of ended out at. We kind of ended out there. They're kind of finishing up the trip and they're going to be leaving the island. Um, yeah, that was a whole mess. That was a whole mess. And then the next day, things seemed to get kind of back together and they was everybody kind of is smooth moving again. They kind of cool again. But um, yeah, it was messy. That was real messy. Real, real messy. And um, we'll go on next week into some new territory and seeing some more different things. But um, I think everybody kind of knew that everything was a mess. And Damon really saved the day when it came to Heavenly and told him, you know, she got a lot of lot to learn. She wasn't trying to be malicious. Yes, yeah, she was. But um, she got a lot to learn. Damon saved her ass. So everybody kind of get up, got up with a clean slate and, and wasn't ready to kill her no more. But baby, right there before they got off the beach, they was ready to fuck Heavenly's ass up. And she was all defensive and they was ready to get her ass. Mm -hmm. Show us. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have to say about this episode of Marriage and Medicine. It was, it was interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, y'all tell me what y'all always do. Honey, tell me what y'all think. Um, let's get it going. All right, later.